Hi guys, I'm James from Batrium and today I'll be going over how to use a circuit breaker in your Batrium system. So to start, let's go over how one is used. It's basically the last line of defense for battery safety. So we can see our little onion ring diagram here showing the upper and lower limits of increasing severity as we move out of the normal operating range. The battery has a comfort zone denoted in green here and all our regular operating uh, parameters like charge target and balance threshold live in that zone. The parameters are usually found in the remote tab or the cellmon tab. On our next layer out we have the charge cutout values. These tell the charger or loads to stop as we've gone outside the comfort zone. These are usually found in the charge tab or discharge tab in the control logic area. And much farther out than those, we have the critical values. These should never be reached in normal operation, so they should be set quite far out. If you aren't prepared to run at your main battery cable with a fire axe, these shouldn't be occurring. Thankfully, our BMS tripping a circuit breaker is much less destructive than that, but it shouldn't be done lightly as you could be leaving a cell suspended at a high voltage where the charger can't do anything to bring it back down until you intervene. Uh, even with that in mind, you absolutely still should have your BMS set up to be able to trip your circuit breaker, and this is absolutely doable with our Watchmon, usually with an expansion board. Let's go over how to do this. So the simplest and most common is a shunt trip. Is basically a small electromagnetic coil with the power to push down the circuit breaker's lever and cause it to trip. The larger ones are called MCCC, oh, sorry, MCCBs or molded case circuit breakers and here's an example. We can see the big screw terminals at the top and at the bottom for carrying the battery current and under the cover here is our shunt trip which we'll need to wire our expansion board into with these two terminals here. Now these are generally not cheap, but if you have an industrial operation shutting down near you, you can find these fairly easily, and they're much better extinguishing arcs than fuses or contactors. Here's a wiring diagram showing how that would be done. It's pretty simple. All you need is a DC to DC to take your battery voltage down to your shunt coil voltage, then that goes through a relay on our expansion board to fire the shunt trip. Uh, then in the software, you can set the corresponding output to pulse on. It's usually two seconds more. Uh, yeah, two seconds, which is more than enough to trip without burning out the coil when the system enters a critical state. Uh, the next scenario is a shunt trip with feedback. These are common on the smaller circuit breakers, like the one we've got here and the shunt trip sits off to the side and snaps on. And uh, it's basically the same as the last one, the only difference is that they close an extra contact when the circuit breaker is closed, normal operation, and another one when it's open. It's been tripped. These extra outputs can be wired into the inputs on our expansion board to check the state of the circuit breaker. That way the BMS knows if a short caused the circuit breaker to trip, or the shunt trip failed to trip the circuit breaker and needs to be triggered again. And here's how you would configure that in our software. And here's how you might wire that up. Just make sure to check your specific shunt trip instructions to find out which pin is which, because they're all a bit different. A third type that we have that we're only just seeing pop onto the market are reclosing circuit breakers. These use a geared motor to open the circuit breaker, and importantly, they can even be used to close the circuit breaker again after a fault subsides. These can also be used with our expansion board. Here's a wiring diagram that shows how you might hook one up. We just need to uh, hook it up to the relays. It handles the heavy lifting internally, so you just need to give it power and connect the common contact to the open or close terminals with the relays on our expansion board. And here's how you might set that up in our software. So there you have it. Hope that sparks some ideas on how to make your battery pack as safe as possible with our BMS. And good luck with your projects. See ya.